This is an International Harvester Transtar 2 tractor with a Rogers Lowboy trailer. This was made by Diecast Promotions and it's in 164 scale. Now this set is just awesome. I love old school cab overs. I love them, love them, love them. And this is a really good set because it just looks great, but also it has a, a period correct Rogers Lowboy. It's an old school Lowboy. Uh, they diecast promotions could have stuck any low boy with this tractor and it looked pretty good but they went old school with it and it just looks fabulous uh, there's an awesome amount of history in this tractor but we'll get into that in a minute right off the bat you can see it just looks great it's got that awesome paint scheme to it a lot of these old internationals had just a classy paint to it with different colors and stripes and just pinstriping and this just looks fantastic. It's a great color scheme. The wheels look great. I can't tell if these are split rims or not. They, they kind of look like they are, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, overall, it just looks fantastic. It really does. It's got just the right amount of polished aluminum and chrome. The, the paint, like I said, is just about right. So many of these old Transtars had just a great paint scheme to them. And this does not disappoint. Uh, you can just barely see inside the cab there, and it does look pretty decent, but you really can't see anything. The mirrors and everything, the wipers, they all look really good. The little turn signals look great. Uh, like I said, the wheels look fantastic. Around the back side, you have your, your air lines and your electric line right there, which is pretty cool. You got mud flaps with the old silver tips, which is nice. If you look underneath, everything's there that should be there. And oh, what's that blue? I know what that is. If you pop up the cab, which it does tilt, but man, it is stiff. Good lord. It'll go. Hopefully I won't break it. Oh my goodness. There we go. Alright, I know what that is. If you know what motor it is, let me know. I want to see who else knows. But that is cool. I love it. If, uh, if you know what you're looking at, then you know that there is no greater manufacturer for turning diesel fuel into noise. Anyway, it looks great underneath. I love that you can tilt up the cab and see everything. Uh, it's just, it's really cool. These trucks are so well done from diecast formations. I really wish they would do these in 150th scale, but... I'll take it. 164th is okay. You still get a pretty good amount of detail for 164th. Now, it looks like they're steering, and there is some amount of steering, but there's not a whole lot. For 164 scale, I think it's pretty good, and I certainly think that's passable. Now, the trailer itself, like I said, this is a period correct trailer. These 4070Bs, I believe they were like mid 70s to early 80s maybe like early 70s early 80s they were the second version of the Transtar which originally came out in like 64 65 something like that it was mid 60s and they were just uh they were great trucks anyway so this is an, an older scale older older vintage we'll get there eventually uh Rogers low boy you can see the Rogers logo right there it's really hard to get a good look at it but Oh my goodness, almost went through the table. It is an, an older low boy, which is cool. You see how just well built these things were uh, back in the day. And generally speaking, uh, nothing is built the way it used to be. If you got, uh, say, a 40 ton low boy, you know, in the mid 70s, early 70s, it was a it was a 40 ton low boy on paper but you could probably put a hundred ton on it and it would still handle it because everything was just built so heavy back in the day um now this one you'll notice it does have the outriggers out and they are fixed in position that they're not coming off there which is okay it's not great not perfect but it's okay uh you can see the trailer has just a little bit of suspension and it also has the matching wheels for the tractor which is cool um uh, Back in the day, you would have never had, you know, polished aluminum wheels on a low boy. It just, it just didn't happen. I mean, maybe once in a while, but not very often. You do have the silver tip mud flaps, which is very unusual, but looks great. Overall, the trailer is really nice, and I dig it. Uh, you do have a little stabilizer, or, uh, you know, stabilizer jack 
for the trailer, which is cool. It does pop open, or the neck pops off, I guess you could say. And you do have little, little ramps that fold down, which is pretty cool. I think that's awesome for 164 scale. Now, the, the set is a little bit more expensive, but I think you, you generally get what you pay for, you know, and I, I, I dig it. I think it's great. Um, I think Diecast Formations does a really good job with these sets. Now, where does Diecast Formations end and First Gear start and stop? I have no idea. I really couldn't tell you. But whatever it is they're doing, they're doing it right. Because this is just a great set. It really looks good. Now, these Trans Stars, a lot of people call these internationals, uh, these international truck binders, uh, corn binders. Because... Whereas most trucking companies would buy, uh, you know, Kenworths and Peterbilts and Freightliners, you know, serious trucks, I guess you could say. International built trucks for the farmers. They were very budget friendly. They were no frills, simple trucks. And they got the name Cornbinder because, well, most farmers had internationals for grain trucks. Just because it, it was the cheapest truck that you could get that would do the job. Like I said, they were just strong, simple trucks. So, they they gained a lot of popularity that way. And then, um, eventually, you know, they, they kind of called on in, in the rest of the trucking world. And they, they certainly built nice trucks. Like, you could buy a nice Transtar. Like, once you started getting into the Eagle series, uh, those were, like, I don't know if you'd say top-of-the-line trucks, but they were certainly very nice. Very nice interiors, very nice motors, good transmissions, good suspensions. And they they were they were competitive to, uh, you know, Kenworth and Peterbilt. Certainly not as nice, but they also didn't cost as much. And generally speaking, for all these road tractors, especially nowadays, you're paying for the interior. Like, you're paying for the frame in the interior more than anything else. You can pick your axles, you can pick your wheels, you can pick your motor, and you can pick your transmission. There's not much left after that. I mean, you can pick your suspension, too. So, like I said, uh, these uh, the, the, the trucks were very uh, cost-effective. You could get an awful lot of truck for not a lot of money, which is why a lot of fleets wound up running uh, Transtars, you know, through the 70s. Just because they, they were so cost effective and they were good, decent, simple trucks. Anyway, that's about all I got for this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. If there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. I might just have it. Um, if you'd like to see more of what I have, please subscribe to Maryland Construction Diecast. And thanks for watching.